What is up guys, how you all doing? I am back for another video. And I know I've said that so many times in the past, but this time I'm gonna be making a few more. Uh, things have changed in my lifestyle, my kind of uh, work life, meaning that I'm gonna have more time to do this by creation, so that's fantastic. And I'm looking forward to getting back in kind of the swing of the YouTube sort of way of things. Now, the thing that really made me kind of come back right now is this. Now, I have seen so many over emotional, crazy videos out there about this MacBook Pro. Uh, it's been kind of amusing uh, watching the infighting of the Apple haters has been very amusing as well. Now, Jonathan at TLD makes great videos and he made a really superb video, uh, in fact, two videos about the new Core i9 uh, MacBook Pro. And there was no kind of ulterior motives or emotion around it. It was just purely common sense based uh, performance statistics and he just went at it from a really logical point of view. So check out that video, I'll leave a link down in the video description. Now the one I went for is the Core i9. Now I'm currently on the 2016 MacBook Pro, 15 inch quad core, spec'd out. And I haven't really been thinking, oh this thing's running slow, because it's still a super, super fast machine. And if you do want a cheap option, go out and look for a 2016, 2017 MacBook Pro. Now these ones have come out and that price will have dropped and you're gonna get yourself a fantastic machine. However, I always uh, like to do the upgrade because if I can improve performance even a little bit, then obviously that makes me more efficient. That means that I can uh, you know, obviously generate more revenue in my work and be faster at what I do. So yeah, this was the one that I went for. It's the top spec one, and the only thing I tweaked was the Core i9. So I believe that this has got, in fact, it should tell me on here, I should know this really, shouldn't I? Uh, it's got the uh, the Radeon Pro 560X, 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I did actually bump that up as well from 16. And this one's just got the half terabyte SSD. Now, the reason I went with the half terabyte SSD is because A, I've got a ridiculous amount of storage available to me, very, very fast storage, and B, I use these things. Uh, and to me, this is just a better way of working. So this is the uh, Cal Digit uh, Tough Drive, one terabyte SSD. This thing's unbreakable and uh, also ridiculously fast. I like the fact that I can put stuff on it, take it home, plug it in, put it on my other devices. It's all extremely fast USB-C. So yeah, I don't really need any of the uh, extra storage. And that four terabyte option, wow the storage costing more than the computer itself. But then again, you know, if you need that, then I guess it's worth it. But I just couldn't uh, bring myself to, to up the storage because I just don't use it. I, my device that I've got at the moment has only got 120 gigabytes in use. And even when I'm editing videos and stuff on it, I tend to use external devices to move data around. So I'm not really that fussed with the uh, extra storage. But let's get into this unboxing. And then I'll talk to you about a couple of other things that I'm gonna do with this laptop that will be completely different to what anyone else has done so far. So first of all, packaging. Very, very different Apple packaging. Only messing is exactly the same as it always is. And then right on the top of the box, we've got the laptop itself. And I know that there is a massive trade-off between the calling and so I suppose even the battery life and a few other things with the form factor. But to have a machine that is this powerful, even when it's kind of being throttled, this small and this portable with that size screen is more important to me than having a huge chunky device that can run the processor at its absolute full capability but weighs a ton, has a massive power supply and everything else. I feel like the trade-off is worth it. Personally, a lot of people, as we've seen in these videos, definitely disagree with me, but that's why there's choice. That's why you can go out and get all these other great devices that are out there on the market today. So that's my kind of thoughts on that so far. You get the little uh, USB-C cable, you also get the getting started stuff and probably a sticker in there from Apple, and then you get the big power brick. I say big, when you compare this to some of the, the huge Windows devices that, that do have that 
insanely good cooling and everything else that allow you to use the internals to their absolute maximum, the power bricks aren't as small as that. Um, so yeah, nice small power brick really, considering from Apple. Let's just open this up and have a look. I haven't even opened this before, so I've literally saved this purely for this video. Normally, as soon as I get something, I have to unwrap it and check it out and play with it, and then I put it all back together, and then I do an unboxing, but this time I was like, no, I'm gonna save this purely for you guys, because I definitely owe you it. And anyone who is watching this video, who is one of my loyal subscribers for the last, I think, seven years or something like that, I've been doing this, and has dealt with my ridiculous inconsistency of uploading videos, and he's still hanging on in there, I salute you. Thank you very, very, very much. It means a lot. Let's get this bad boy open. I love this unwrapping procedure uh, on this product. I went for the space gray, by the way, guys, because why wouldn't you? Why on earth would anyone buy the silver one? Um, I'm not knocking the silver one. It's still obviously a beautiful device. In fact, if any of you do opt for silver, let me know down in the comments why you do do that because I'm really, really interested because I just think that this space gray MacBook Pro is just a sensational looking device. And again, I go back to this kind of thinness. Now I know it gets so much stick for doing that and the lack of cooling and all the rest of it, but like I say, for me, the trade-off is worth it. There we go. How beautiful is that? There's no denying the, the spectacularness uh, of the build of this laptop. Uh, I think the problem that people have with it is that you're paying that money for the extra i9 upgrade or even the, the fast i7 version and it's unable to achieve its fastest performance because of the design of the laptop. And I completely understand that. Um, what I don't understand is how much abuse and stuff people get for just kind of discussing it logically. Um, I find that crazy. But yeah, we've all seen these these MacBooks before. You've got the four USB-C ports. Uh, you've still got the headphone jack, believe it or not, uh, on there. And then you've got the call-in ports on the bottom. Oh, I just think this thing is so spectacularly beautiful. Even to hold in your hand when you get it out and it's and it's cold because of that aluminium body. I just think it's stunning. And, and I absolutely love this device. Um, to have that much power being that portable to me is incredible. So that is that. Now, you guys, I owe you. So in the comments, you tell me exactly what videos you wanna see on that new uh, 2018 MacBook Pro. Literally, anything you ask me to do, I'm gonna try and make videos on it for you. Now, let me tell you about my next idea that I'm gonna do with this. Now, as you guys know, I've had the Mac Pro now for a long time, 2013, so that's five years. To be honest with you, it still performs how I need it to. I've got an eGPU attached to it, I've got six 4K screens, and it performs pretty much as good as I need it to. Now, what I'm wondering, though, is whether or not this will perform better and whether I should swap my Mac Pro out for this. I really don't know. But what I'm gonna do to test it is this. First of all, I'm gonna get my other one of these out. Now this is the Sonnet um, EGFX breakaway box and this is a USB-C or rather Thunderbolt 3 um, eGPU. Now inside that eGPU, I'm not gonna go with the Radeon, uh, sorry, the, 80, uh, the uh, AMD 580 um, RX like I've got on this one because you can now buy that Blackmagic device that everyone's got and they're all testing it. What I'm gonna put in this one is this. This absolute beast. So this is the uh, Asus uh, Strix. This is a 1080 Ti uh, graphics card that I've actually taken out of one of my miners over there. So um, I'm gonna try this in the eGPU, connected up to the MacBook Pro, and we're gonna see how insane we can get the results. And I'm really excited about it. And hopefully, if I can bring myself to unplug my Mac Pro and all the cables, uh, I'm gonna plug this device uh, into the screens and I'm gonna see the MacBook Pro with the 1080 Ti, maybe even two 1080 Ti's running side by side on two eGPUs across all six of these 4K screens and see 
does it compare to the Mac Pro even after all these years? Um, bearing in mind that my Mac Pro is a 10 core, 128 gigabyte of RAM behemoth. <laughs> but anyway, how cool is that? I'm super excited to check out a MacBook Pro with eGPU with a 1080 Ti looking, care, uh, looking after the graphics. So yeah, that's it from me guys. Again, thank you very much for your loyalty. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, uh, give me a shout in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking about what I should do with this. Do you think this video is a good idea? Let me know your thoughts about the MacBook Pro in general. Have a go at me for being away for so long. Uh, let's have some banter. And I will see you all in the next one, guys. Peace.